And we're going to look at two case studies, Kibera, which is an urban slum in Nairobi, Kenya, and Daravi, which is an urban slum in Mumbai, India. All right, let's familiarize yourself with Kibera in Nairobi, Kenya. Click on this link. It should take you to a Google uh, map. Uh, and Take a look at uh, uh, Kibera, kind of zoom out and see where it is relative to uh, downtown Nairobi. Uh, and also notice the, uh, uh, the golf course uh, that happens to be right up against the, uh, uh, the, uh, the slum. I want you to take a look at this video here. One of the things that's kind of cool about uh, uh, YouTube and I guess this globalization is uh, uh, I can actually take you uh, to Kibera. I can actually take you to ground level. Uh, and so what this is is someone who uh, uh, who actually walked through uh, Kibera, gave it definitely a, a person level uh, perspective. Uh, and one thing, some of the things I want you to think about are, uh, you know, how are the people dressed, uh, and why are they dressed that way? Why are they dressed? Uh, uh, I'll go ahead and kind of uh, uh, get my punchline, but why are they dressed so nice? Um, also, uh, take a look at uh, kind of the, the, the demographics. Uh, do you see a lot of kids? Do you see a lot of old people? Do you see a lot of middle-aged people? What do you see a lot of? Uh, other things, uh, uh, you will see some kids in the, uh, in the video. Uh, take a look at what, they're, what they say uh, when the, uh, uh, when the uh, camera focuses, on them, focuses in on them. Uh, and so they're actually speaking in English. Um, other things to think about at the end, uh, you'll notice uh, the, the train, uh, and so that kind of goes along with other things we've talked about uh, earlier in uh, previous uh, discussions. Uh, I will give you a warning, though, this video does contain parts, especially there in the middle, uh, that do contain some foul, explicit language. So it is a, a heads up, a, hit, uh, a warning. Uh, and so as you watch this video, uh, I want you to describe Kibera. I want you to be able to think about, you know, what would it smell like there? You know, what would it, what would it, you know, some of the sounds, what would it, what would, you know, evoke all the senses? What would, you know, what were some, what would it be like to, to eat uh, and taste some of the, the cuisine uh, from the urban slums? So really evoke all the senses as you uh, watch this video and kind of be able to put yourself uh, in Kibera, although you're far, far away. So like I say, describe Kibera. And so here's uh, Kibera. It's an informal settlement in Nairobi. Notice the, uh, the housing. Notice it's just essentially scrap materials that are put up. Uh, and keep in mind that uh, uh, Kenya is, uh, uh, has, has, you know, definitely has more precipitation than we do, uh, especially with it being um, very close to a rainforest. Uh, and so the, obviously uh, uh, they have to put up the shelter to, to keep everything dry. Um, due to that climate, uh, but you can see very haphazard housing. Imagine if a if if any bit of wind came through this area, a, a large uh, a windstorm or just a large uh, thunderstorm. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the, the housing wouldn't be able to withstand it. So I think this goes along with what I've talked about before regarding unsafe or uh, maybe uh, not durable housing. And here we have a little guy, uh, and so one of the things, you know, we, this is just laden with, with various images, but uh, uh, when we look at infectious diseases, when we look at the epidemiological transition, I mean, we can, we can distribute information left and right. We can immunize as much as we can, uh, but as we can see in this image, there's some factors uh, that we have to consider just regarding the living conditions. And so you just imagine what's in this, this, this creek or this ditch, uh, that this uh, little guy's playing in. Uh, and so one of the things we, we have to think about is just simple living conditions. And if you're, uh, if you're getting ready to eat a meal, you might want to skip on a few, a uh, few slides. Uh, but, uh, one of the things that uh, is an issue in these urban slums is the, uh, the lack of, of, of sanitary facilities, lack of facilities where you just, for number one, and number two, you push a button, poof, it's gone. Uh, and so one of the things that, uh, there's, People have taken uh, tried to take advantage of this, and so uh, these are actually pay-per-use toilets. Uh, and so I ask you, uh, how many times have you paid to use a restroom? Uh, and so one of the things is here in a developed country, it's something that we never have to do. Uh, but in an urban slum, one of the most poorest areas of, of the world, they have to pay to use the toilet. Uh, and so one of the things we have to think about also is uh, what you, what do you do uh, with your feces? Uh, and so in in the in this slum in particular, they developed this term flying toilets. Uh, and so what you do is you know uh, if you don't have uh, a facility, uh, if you don't have the, the the coins, the twenty cents to use the uh, the toilet, 
uh, then you just simply just use a, a bag. Uh, and so, you know, you obviously you don't want that bag to sit right next to you in your in your uh, living room. And so you then throw it onto the roof or the street once it's full. And in this slum, there's one toilet per 2,000 persons. Uh, and so think, how many toilets do you think there are per person in your own household, but also uh, just here in the United States? And you don't believe me, click on this link. And so here's probably, you know, the best place to go. Uh, and so this uh, is a marshy area just off the, the urban slum here in Cabrera. Uh, and so these provides nice cover. Uh, and so this would be a great place to go, uh, number one and number two. Uh, and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, finding a plastic bag. But don't go here at night. Uh, so one of the things at night, these are one of the last places you want to be caught because of crime. Uh, and so one of the things at night is crime is very rampant and is very dense and uh, uh, a crowded area in which uh, there's all kinds of nooks and crannies and also uh, all kinds of cover. And here's a guy uh, working in the, in the uh, uh, I guess, manufacturing or art. Uh, what he's doing is he's taking uh, trash and converting him into uh, art that can then be sold to uh, American tourists who come back and say, "Oh, I'm so, I'm so debonair and I'm so, so cosmopolitan and worldly. Uh, I went to Kenya and I, I bought a figurine from this, uh, from this African man." Uh, and you know, obviously, this guy is just taking advantage of uh, of tourists who come to Nairobi to visit the safaris and uh, and, and further south to the tropical rainforest and the jungles. Like I said, there is an economy, uh, and so here's a shoe salesman in an urban slum. If we look at Kenya, look at its population pyramid, it has a whole lot of kids. Uh, and so when we think about today's population, especially in Kibera, it is just full of children. And so one of the issues regarding that is when you have you know, a ton of kids, uh, when, you know, you've, you've got almost, you know, it's, it's, it's almost out of control. Uh, and so you don't have, you know, this, this, this situation here in the United States of, you know, this kind of a symmetrical population. Uh, and so one of the things here is oftentimes uh, because of the impact of AIDS in Africa, uh, actual older kids who are like 14, 15 become uh, the heads of households. Uh, and so that's one of the issues in, in Kibera is the fact that it's such a young population. And here we see kids that are uh, obviously school kids. And one of the things you first off notice is, they're, very, they're dressed very nice. Uh, and throughout a lot of these images, we saw very well-dressed individuals. And one of the things is, uh, why? Well, you know, this is, this is one of those things where any time they're, they're, they're you know, having a job interview. And so at any time, uh, they might find someone who says, hey, you know, we're look, I need someone to, to distribute some newspapers. Uh, and so, you know, I don't show up to interviews dressed in sweatpants and T-shirts. Uh, you know, I show up to, to interviews wearing a tie, you know, even a suit. Uh, I sure, sir, certainly don't teach ever in a suit, but uh, for that interview, I sure do. And so one of the things you see is you see very well-dressed individuals because they never know when that next job is going to come, especially with the, uh, uh, the large presence of the informal sector of the economy. Let's move on to Mumbai, India. Mumbai, India is uh, also known as Bombay, uh, and so it's one of the largest uh, cities in the world. Uh, we zoom in uh, to this area within the red box and we'll uh, see uh, our next urban slum we're going to look at. All right, click on this link and it'll take you to a Google map image of Dharavi in Mumbai, uh, India. One of the things you'll note once you look at that, uh, you've got Dharavi here kind of in the uh, south central of this uh, image, but this red circle is illustrative of the Bandra Kurla financial complex. And so what this was, was uh, a large urban slum that was essentially raised by the government. And so one of the key issues regarding these urban slums in developing countries is uh, they're often in uh, kind of these, uh, this, these areas that aren't really, you know, controlled anywhere. The government really, I mean, it's obviously uh, Indian land, but they're not there, you know, it's not zoned. Uh, it's very much informal, and so it's essentially the squatters where people just just squat and they just uh, together all uh, kind of just just claim this area as their home. So at any time, because they lack tenure, at any time the government can just come in and say, "All right, all you people we've got to go." Uh, so that's what they did here in India. Uh, and so they removed that urban slum population, and so all that did was increase the population uh, even more so 
uh, uh, here in uh, Duravi uh, on the other side of this little marshy uh, river area. And here's uh, the Bandra Kurla, uh, Kurla complex, a planned commercial complex, kind of a, the idea it was going to be a growth center that, uh, uh, that would attract many foreign multinational corporations, and it's kind of redundant, uh, uh, but multinational corporations, for example, Citibank, which we see here, uh, and so the idea that this would become the, very much the international business and financial center hub uh, for, uh, for, uh, for India, but much of South Asia. Uh, and so they just wiped this out, trying to uh, attract multinational corporations to uh, that land. And so here's Duravi. So let's take a closer look at Duravi. Here's a visual perspective. You can see a little bit sturdier housing, a little bit nicer housing uh, than what we saw in uh, Kenya. Uh, but still, uh, we see a lot of corrugated steel, uh, tarps, uh, but definitely a little bit sturdier business, or, uh, um, uh, building structures. Uh, and so one of the things we'll talk about here is you know, you're likely to find cable television, uh, you're likely to find electricity uh, here in Slum. In fact, you're likely to find people who actually are here in the United States going to school uh, who are from this neighborhood. So um, one of the things we kind of uh, have in our uh, fixated in our heads is that, that oh, they're just poor, uneducated, or they're all just a bunch of poor, educated, uneducated individuals, which is definitely not the case. Uh, if we look at Dharavi, uh, it's an informal settlement in uh, Mumbai. Uh, it's about 500 acres. Uh, so to illustrate how dense, how crowded this is, uh, I did some research. Uh, and I found out that IUPUI's campus is also about 500 acres. So they're both about the same size. Uh, Dharavi has over 1 million residents. Uh, so that would be like putting the population of Marion County, which is 800,000, also including the population of Johnson County, the county to the south of Indianapolis, 150,000, plus the population of Hancock County, about 50,000, putting all of those three populations in those three different counties inside IEPY's campus. Pretty darn packed. Pretty darn dense. And here's an example of, uh, of how they try to live wherever they can. Uh, and so here you have this kind of this monolith uh, uh, this this rock that has kind of been able to uh, withstand weathering and erosions, uh, and it's uh, you know you get all up along the cliff. You got people trying to uh, uh, habitat that uh, uh, that that little uh, sliver of space. And here there's a large thriving economy. And so one of the things is uh, this is the uh, uh, the Dobi Ghats, and so here these are uh, this is an area where people do laundry and provide laundry ser services for a lot of the uh, the super wealthy that live nearby in large uh, you know, uh, condos that overlook uh, the Indian Ocean. So you have super wealthy individuals that actually prefer their laundry done by these individuals here uh, because they believe they do such a darn good job and it's handmade, it's hand done and uh, so forth. Here's a snapshot inside the slum. Uh, one of the things is, you know, it looks pretty sturdy. Uh, you have individuals who uh, have, have kitchens and so forth. But it is very, very, very uh, close quarters. Uh, and one way to illustrate this, uh, if you went out, if you uh, taped a box out uh, on the floor wherever you are, and that box is seven foot by eight foot, uh, that would be the per person amount of space that each person would have. Uh, even let's make let's make this a little bit more realistic. Double that. Uh, so let's make it 14 by 16. Uh, considering that, a lot, if you notice in those previous images, a lot of these places are two story. Uh, so each person gets. 14 by 16 foot uh, amount of space to do everything. That's their kitchen, their living room, uh, their bedroom, their bathroom, their everything. Uh, and so very, very dense quarters. Uh, but this is what they grew up, this is what they're used to. And so when we look at, you know, crowded, what they know to them isn't that crowded. It's what they know. It's just what they grew up. It's part of their culture. But what we think is crowded, uh, you know, maybe completely different. So some things to think about. Uh, given the bleak living conditions, why do so many rural migrants continue to move to these informal settlements in ur urban areas? Uh, but, you know, yeah, bleak. Do we have a distorted view of what is considered bleak? Uh, what I think is bleak, you know, once again, if you saw all those images, you saw people with smiles on their faces. You saw some people that were quite happy. Uh, other things to think about is why are there so many young people here, uh, especially in, in Cabero? Uh, what's going on there. And we can really tie these into other things we've talked about uh, in previous discussions and also in future uh, talks.
Tashnam. And so what are the implications for the future of cities with this huge disparity between uh, young and old? So these are some things to think about as we progress. We're definitely going to hear and learn more about uh, Kiberas and Duravis as, 